right, would you? <laughs> Welcome along, everybody. <laughs> uh, Micah Richards didn't have time to be in set today, yeah. but he is. He just Micah, have time for FaceTime, apparently. You're live, huh? Show. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I can't show him like that. He's Mike, got his best on now. No, I can't show him like that. You can't. We've Mike seen his FaceTimed no, him with a towel around We've seen his boom. <laughs> yeah, you, you're ready? ready? Hey, it's late, huh? Turn have you, around, have you got around. a message for, the, for your views who you've let down tonight? So, so basically, I just want to say, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 Are you getting ready for the gooch? <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved for the towel. Has he been drinking? Mike, have you been drinking? No. This is just me. We were, we were hoping that you were. <laughs> no, 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 no drinking, no drinking. No. See you. We've got a show It's all about you tonight. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> We're back, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. And congratulations, first and foremost. Uh, first and foremost, I have a question, but I wanted to tell you something. You look good in red and white. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to say it. Uh, but, I, okay. I it from... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, Ari. But I have, I, have a, I have a proper question, sorry. Um, does it bother you that you cannot drop as much at, as you used to do for Tottenham because I think you could do it for that team with the guys that can do the exact same thing that Son or Kusevsky used to do. Does it bother you? No, I don't think so. I think, obviously, it's still early on in my, my career here and I'm still getting to know the players and, and know the coach and the way we want to play. Um, I mean, the game today, me and Jamal played more as number 10s and we allowed the wingers to almost play 1v1 uh, against the fullback. So uh, I think each game will dictate the way we play, but for sure, um, you know, I feel like I can, I'm still getting to know the players around me, you know, how they move, how they run, uh, what kind of passes uh, they like. So that will come over time. The good thing is that we've, we've started well, you know, uh, not just tonight, but throughout the whole season so far. Um, and then, you know, we can improve. So that's a, that's a good sign. Harry, how different is the Bundesliga to the Premier League? Yeah, it's different. Obviously, it's still early days. You know, the games I've played so far have been really high tempo. You know, every team we've played pretty much tries to play out. Uh, I think three, three out of four of the games, you know, they play man for man pressure. So uh, I've been impressed. You know, it's, it's uh, obviously a, a lot for a lot going on for me at the moment. You know, a lot of new surroundings uh, on and off the pitch. So, um, yeah, I still feel like I'm finding my feet, but uh, I'm really enjoying it. You know, uh, I'm really enjoying the team and the coaches and, you know, a new start of football, a new league. Um, and like I say, we've got plenty of games coming up, which I'm excited for. Real Gluck in München? I ain't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there, Ains, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> can you win this Champions League? Can this team, you've moved there now, you're playing Champions League, it's probably going to be guaranteed all the time that you're there. So much quality in the team, uh, but I definitely think there's there's room for improvement, and, and we know that as players, and you know the coach is you know driving us to to, to get better. But uh, for sure, you know there's not many teams around Europe who will look at our team and, and want to play us. So we need to you know use that confidence uh, to our advantage, especially here at home, like we did tonight. So um, yeah, there's a long way to go. We started the campaign well. Bayern Munich uh, always uh, you know do solid, especially in the group stages. Uh, so hopefully we can continue that, and then. You know, come the new year, once the knockout stage starts, you know, that's where, you know, the business end uh, really matters. So, um, hopefully we're in a good position. Don't pretend that you don't. You do. <laughs> Who's going to yeah. win? Oh, of course, Tottenham. Oh, you know, we started, my uh, gosh, we started, we started the season him. well, so uh, oh. no, it should be, a, should be a great game. I'll give you a, I'll give you a text after a after Okay, oh. okay, let's talk. We'll see. <laughs> all, very, very good match and all the best for the rest of the season. Cheers. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I guess I'm interested. Obviously, two of the best strikers that the Premier League has ever seen. Is there a favourite for you, Jamie? Oh, Harry, Harry sucked, he sucked the earphones out. He doesn't want to... I just enjoy watching play, full stop. You, you have to be honest, at one point, you have to put the rivalry and everything on the side. He's a player that I like to watch because he can do it all. He can come in midfield, he can pass that ball. We showed it before. <clears> he has that De Bruyne pass in between lines. He has it in the air. He's good also with his head. He can take, he can take penalties, free kicks. I think he needs to still work on that. But 
if you don't like to watch Harry Kane and how he plays and how he uses his body, how he can play sometimes alone up front, how he can make you breathe a bit when you play away from home. So I just like to watch him play, really. I, I mean, listen, we had a joke there about the, the two players, but I think they're completely different players, but mm. almost similar in ways as well, because I wouldn't describe Thierry as a goal scorer. I wouldn't describe Harry Kane as a goal scorer. Even though they score lots of goals, they're great players. And that means for me, they're better than lots of players who play in the same position, who get lots of goals, that he's a great player. Thierry obviously used to create as many goals as he scored because he had great pace, he'll get down the flanks. Harry Kane does something that I've never seen a player in his position do before, in that you're seeing someone who's a real number nine, he holds the ball, he brings people into play, he scores goals. And as his game's evolved, he's almost dropped deep to become a number 10 or a playmaker, which is Terry's talked about. I've never seen that before, and that just shows how good a player he is. And that's why Bayern Munich have paid £100 million for him, even when he's 30 years of age. He's a special personal player, he's a world-class player, but I've just got to go for Thierry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you asked him if he's frustrated not being able to drop back no, more in that it, role. Is it, that because you would be frustrated? And do you feel frustration for him that he's not able to do that? Because he can do it all, and I think with the team that they have, it, it, can, it can suit the way they play. Uh, I just think that why, why, why don't you want to utilize an all-around player instead of you know using only one thing that he can do? If he didn't have any, you know, that I wanted to ask him, but overall he can do it all, so it's not a problem. But I just think that with that team he can work. Dre, commiserations. How are you and the team feeling after that defeat? It's difficult. You know, it's difficult to um, to lose this way because I think we were. In the beginning, we start we start very good, and um, after my mistake, um, we lost the control of the game. I'm, um, you know, it's a difficult situation for for us, for me especially, because I, I'm the one who let the team down. And uh, yeah, but um, the team was good, were very good, I think, because of me. We didn't win this game, so yeah, I'm happy for the work of the teams, and um, we just have to move on. You know, this is life of the goalkeeper, and um, if uh, we didn't win today, it's um, because of me. There was a lot of focus on the first goal conceded, particularly after the positive start Manchester United had in the game. Do you feel that that goal being conceded is, is the responsibility of yourself and why the game ended up the way it did eventually? I think, I think yes, I think yes, you know, because we, we were very good. On the ball, we, they didn't create any chances. The first shot, um, the shot on target, I made a mistake. So I think um, it was the keep on. You know, it was the keep on, and the team, the team went down because of that mistake. So, well, we have to. I have to learn from it and be strong, move on. It's not an easy situation, but uh, I'm very happy for the comeback of the team. We were fighting till the end, but I have to. You know, I have to recognize because of me, we, we didn't win. It's still early days in your Manchester United career, but do you feel like you still have a lot to prove to the Manchester United fans? Of course, of course, I still have a, I have a lot to prove because, uh, to be honest, my start in Manchester United uh, is not so good. How, it's not how I want. Play how I play today for me is uh, one of my worst games. And uh, it's difficult, you know, it's difficult because we, we have big ambition, we are a very big club and we want to win everything. And, it was a big bounce for us to. It was a big opportunity for, for us to bounce back after the, um, the situation. The situation we are facing, and yeah, it's tough. You know, it's tough time, and we have to be together. We have to continue working how we are doing, and uh, learn from our mistake because it's the yeah, it's the only thing to do. Thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. You know what I have to say. Goalkeepers, when they make mistakes, the last thing they want to do is come out and face the, face the media. And we don't normally see them do that. And especially at a club where character has been questioned so much. I actually think that if you're a Manchester United fan, and perhaps as former players and, and legends, you could tell me how that made you feel. I respect that. I think we've both been in a situation where we haven't performed to, to the standard that we've set ourselves. And I've lost games or made mistakes, and I refuse to speak to the media at times. And so I understand this, and it's a difficult position to be in, but that shows good character. Made of the right stuff. He's going to have to, to, to fall back on a, a strong character to make sure that he can't start getting rid of those mistakes in his game because it's difficult to build yourself back up. Yeah. When the ball comes to you, an easy five, ten yard ball becomes something that's very difficult once you've made a couple of mistakes. So he's got to build that up through training, through repetition, but also in more game time. Mm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with, with Rio's assessment of it. He's, 
He's been less than convinced, I'd say, um, in, in goal, stopping goals, which is why he's there. You know, he's a goalkeeper. He has to stop goals. He's been brilliant with his feet, but he's making mistakes. He has to get over that. He has to forget about that. And, you know, you, you make mistakes, as you say. You have disappointments in games. Yeah. You can't afford to dwell on it. You can't have this club because, you know, they'll be playing again Saturday, they'll be playing. He maybe think about it for 24 hours, and once you start training again, bang, it's mm -hmm. gone. Now, the spotlight is going to be on him, we, we know that, but he's been at a big club, he's been, been at Inter Milan, he's at a big club now, he's just got to get over it and you know, look forward and hopefully do better. And he'll need, he'll need the confidence from his teammates, he'll need that, that kind of pat on the back, like, he did, like we saw in the pictures. And a bit more protection. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and you need help in these situations yeah, as well. absolutely. OK, that game's live on TNT Sports at the weekend as well. Meanwhile, here in Munich, I'm on cheer-up duty at the moment because these two are not very happy. Do not... This is a mistake. This is the goal you can see. Well, this is a nightmare scenario for, for Anana. I think he, he's confident as you like with his feet. We were sitting there saying, wow, with a few of the parties. But as a goalkeeper, you're paid to come in there and make saves. And this is a great bit of skill from Sane. They set it up well, but he doesn't hit it with any real purpose. It's not wide of here. It's not in the corners. Anana, his reactions after this, we'll see in a minute. He should save this. This should be food and drink to him. He should be picking this up and then looking for his next pass. But it's a very, very bad mistake and one that he needs to recover from. He, he really sat down and, and thought about it for a while, Scozzi. He really, you could see the camera kept coming back to him and it was almost playing over in his head for ages. Have you got to put that out of your mind immediately? Yes, of course you have, but he knows he's made a big mistake. I also think there was other things wrong with the goal, actually. I think Manchester United in the first half played really well, but lapses of concentration and before you know it, bang, bang, you're 2-0 down. And well, it's a big mistake from him and you know, he needs to recover, he needs to get over that and now concentrate. Well, let's look at that second bang because it was four minutes later Serge Gnabry with the goal, but really Musiala doing the most amazing work in this one. Yeah, it's a, we, we mentioned this lad before the game. And he's got brilliant skill, he's got a great turn of pace. I think it's Dalo, he goes round. I'm not sure what Martinez is doing in this goal as well. Look, Dalo's beat but Martinez, he goes backwards. They've got one between him and Reguilón, I've got one player between them. Reguilón should take that man. Martinez should then be getting out to the to Gnabry who scores a goal. He ends up going back, and if anything, I think he blocks the keeper's doing. There's nothing the keeper can do about it. I, I think Martinez is at fault for that. He should re recognise the danger where there's, where there's players in the box. You can't have men free. But Reguilón is the man furthest behind. He's the centre-back's eyes and ears in that position there. It should be pushing him up, squeezing him up in communication as well. They came back in the second half, and, and it was Hoyland, actually, that managed to get his first goal for Manchester United. Third appearance, what we were talking about pre-match, isn't it? And that's the kind of start you want in the second half. Yes, the city, of course, are really pleased for him to, to get off the mark as well. That'll, that'll do him the world of good. It's a little bit of a, a scrappy goal, I suppose, and it gave United hope, but as I said, once they scored, Bayern will go up the other end, turn it off for five minutes and get a goal, which he did pretty quickly. I, I felt, like you, like that Paul just said, I felt that Bayern were toying with us at times. Yeah. And, and I thought, especially the, in the wide areas, Rusiala, Sane especially, where at any point they thought they could go through the gears and hurt us. But for Hoyland, I'm delighted for him because I think when you come in, when you come into a new club at this side for the fee that he came in for, you want to put your, your mark down somewhere. They didn't win today, but he'll take something from this game. And that's important that the coaching staff, the players, make sure he continues that momentum and confidence building. They weren't in it again for very long. Once again, it was again about four minutes until yeah. they managed to get another goal back. And it must just crush the spirit in the team. I know that eventually they came back into it, but I want to talk about this handball because this, I think, potentially was quite harsh. This is on Ericsson handball. Did he have time, Paul, to move his hand out of the way? Was it in an unnatural position? I think it was slightly an unnatural position. He does see the ball come over and he's got his arm out. So we know this day and age, he's going to get punished for that. Yeah, in this day and age, that's a, I think it's a penalty, it's penalty if you're going to go yeah, by the yeah, rule book. Yeah. But I don't, I, still, I don't think it's a good rule, I have to be honest with you. If you're in a defensive position and you're going to jump and you're going to... Do your hands have to be within the silhouette at all times to make yourself so safe? He must know that, really. He knows he can't afford to have his yeah. arm up here. He just can't afford to do it. Yeah. Harry Kane, who else steps up to take this penalty? Enjoy that one? Yeah, he's, well, I didn't enjoy <laughs> no. it. I didn't enjoy it, no. I said, yeah, then. You did, you did. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you fancy him to score, don't you? Yeah. Su such okay. a clean strike of the ball. And wherever he is, so you don't fancy the keepers to get to it. And Look, it's it easy to watch it and enjoy the actual penalty and the no. technique rather than no. who scored it and no. who he scored no. it for. No, Listen, he's got a great start so far, isn't he, for Bayern Munich? Five goals, two assists. Let's catch up with Harry Kane. He's speaking to Jules Breach. Harry, congratulations. It was a crazy game out there. How did you see it? 
Yeah, I think a crazy finish. I think for the majority of the game, we really controlled it, dictated the, the tempo. Obviously, went 3-1 ahead. Um, and then, yeah, we just kind of lost a bit of concentration there in the last five minutes. And uh, thankfully, we were able to, uh, to hold on to the lead. But overall, it's a, a really good start to the, to the campaign uh, against a, a tough side in Man United. And you've got yourself off to a good start in the Champions League with Bayern Munich as well, scoring your first goal in Europe for them. That's now five for the season. You've settled in pretty quickly here. Yeah, it's been nice. It's uh, obviously always great to score. Um, but as always, you know, always room for improvement. So, uh, yeah, really, really good night tonight. You know, we, we're, we started the season well. We know we can improve in, in certain areas, but I feel like we're building towards that. So, um, yeah, we can just enjoy this. And we've got a, a quick turnaround and another home game here on Saturday. How good is it to play in this team when there are so many talented forwards that can link up together? Yeah, you know, you're, you know, as a striker, I know I'm going to get chances, so uh, it's always exciting to play with them. Um, like I touched on there, I still feel like we're getting to know each other a little bit. I still feel like uh, it's only been a few weeks, so um, yeah, I'm just excited for, for what's to come. If we're doing what we're doing now, and we know we can, you know, have a little bit better understanding, then you know, uh, that's really exciting. So uh, let's see what happens. There's a feeling that you've been brought to this club to win them this trophy back once again, six-time winners of it. Are you enjoying that pressure and how it's started so far for you? Yeah, I think so. You know, uh, whenever you know, there's a big price tag on your name, there's a bit of expectation and you, know, you want to repay the club who's put in faith in you. So uh, it's been really good to start the, the way I have. Um, and of course, this is a big competition. You know, we're one of the favourites in there. So uh, first of all, we have to get the job done in the group and it's a good start here tonight. Um, and then come the new year, hopefully we're in a good place and, and we can look forward to those knockout games. It's the first time you've faced an English club since you left the Premier League. Give us your thoughts on, on what Man United are going through at the moment. Yeah, I, I touched on it before the game. They're obviously going through a difficult spell, uh, obviously suffering with some injuries as well. So um, they're a team with a lot of talent, you know, really. You saw that there in the last five minutes, you know, they can score goals and turn games around really quick. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, um, I'm not too worried about them. I'm more focused on myself, so uh, I'm sure they'll improve. I'm sure they'll try and get back to their best, but I'm just concentrating on us here in, in Germany and uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Well done tonight. Cheers, thank you. He's enjoying it. He's scoring goals. He's getting assists. He's having a great time, really. And the fans absolutely love him. And I've seen hysteria in stadiums before, but I haven't ever seen a level of hysteria quite like this one. This is Rio Ferdinand basically go into the fans just behind the cameras there that's the reaction from a Bayern Munich fan but just getting a photo with Rio Ferdinand look look blowing the kiss he can't believe his luck Rio oh, I'll pay him a tenner in a little while when I go over there in a minute just for that reaction you need to massage the ego massage that ego and look he's still here he's waiting now he wants a picture of Paul Scholes as well I don't think we need to send you over I don't think it's safe over there Paul so we'll keep, we'll keep you here but let's discuss Harry Kane because as we said look he's looking very comfortable in this team he's looking like he's really enjoying it a good move the right move it looks like the right move for now, yeah. Um, I thought it was really good tonight. I thought it was comfortable in possession. When he dropped deep, he received the ball really well. He looked like he was going to score goals. Obviously, he get a goal from open play, but the penalty was never never in doubt. And I like his weight of pass as well. It's something probably that you don't, don't see a lot or you don't realise, but he puts ball to places and tells players where to run. You know, we're linking well these wide players. I still think there's more to come from. I still think there's more to come from this Bayern Munich team. It's very early for him, but I think they'll get better. Once he gets to understand them more, and the other Kingsley Coleman coming on these types of players, clever players, Musiala, Sane, it's breathtaking. That attack line is breathtaking. breathtaking. And once they get to know each other even better, when this comes to later in the competition, look, I don't think these will win it, but I think they could be a threat towards semi-final time. Would you like to see another Manchester United fight back? Shall we? Go the on, next one. Go. This is another one. <laughs> this is Casemiro. This one here made it 3-2. There's a few of these to show you, actually. This was the, the kind of uh, potentially breathing a little bit of life back into them, Rio. Yeah, ugly goal, scruffy goal. But you take <laughs> what you can get in these situations. I think mean, Casemiro wouldn't have had his best game, he already said to you himself. But he managed to get in there and nick a goal there. But And, and you think that... We were saying that, right, OK, you get yourself back in it. Let's consolidate. Let's set ourselves up. Let's make sure that we get a, we're hard to beat again. Tighten up. But this back four was so so wide. It was spread out so wide across the, that box there. There was the holes there to pick out. Look at the distance between the right side of centre half and, this, and the right back. Too big when you're playing against quality like this. Kimmich, no pressure on the ball. Find his man. 
Clinical finish. I, I look at it from Bayern's part of view, and the, the movement is oh. absolutely fantastic. The movement, the pass from Kimmich, brilliant goal. Just when we thought there were no more goals to see, there you go, Bruno free kick, Casemiro getting a nick on it as well. And that's how it finished, really, 4-3. Look, you're right, some scrappy goals in there, some fight backs from Manchester United, quickly extinguished, extinguished by Bayern Munich, and that really was the story of the game, to be honest. So much more, I think, like you say, to come from Bayern Munich, but possibly... It was a roller coaster match to watch, but you stand here again having to answer questions about another defeat. How do you assess what you saw? As you say, I'm disappointed, and because... Uh, we should stay in the game and, and then you see when you score three goals at Bayern and then at least you have to take a point. All of the focus is going to be on those goals that were conceded and the statistics behind it as well. Three or more goals conceded for Manchester United in three consecutive games now. Are you making it too easy for teams to score against you? I wouldn't say like this, and, but we are in a period. Um, a lot going against us, but uh, but we have to make our own look. And uh, when we can't keep going, when we can't keep consistent, do the rules and the principles of our game, then you concede goals. But also telling, have we playing great teams in the last three games? We've spoken to Andre Onana, who feels responsible for the result tonight because, particularly, of the first goal that you conceded. How do you feel he's settled at Manchester United, and are you expecting more from him? Um, <laughs> it's good he's doing that, but uh, it's it's about team, and always uh, mistakes are being made. Uh, but you have to uh, to bounce back as a team. And when you score three goals, Manchester United once again, even when one player makes such a mistake, and you uh, you uh, you uh, it's done, it's gone, and uh, and that is what we as a team, that is what we have to believe that we always can bounce back and. Tonight uh, we showed it, uh, that if you stay in the game and you fight yourself in the game and then keep going, even when there's some mistakes we made. It's Burnley next in the Premier League. How important has that game now become to win? Every game is important and every game is huge. And uh, as I just said, we have to make our own look and no one going to help you. Uh, but uh, as you see, the first 25 minutes and uh, then you have to score a goal, but if not, stay in that game and don't allow opponent to score a goal like we did. And it's not only about one mistake, because also before that, it was too easy that that player get a shot. And you have to be consistent in such moments, and then you will win games. How do you change that then? As we, team, me included, only we can do it. It's in our hands. And uh, no one else. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, there we go. Obviously, Eric Ten Hag fuming because he's saying, look, we need to be more resilient, we need to be harder to beat, which is what you guys are basically saying as well. You look at the score, and, and Rio, you said to me a minute ago, no one would have expected that score, but at the same time, no one... <laughs> That's my friend Thomas Tuchel. Hello. <laughs> Thomas Tuchel come out to say hello come to the on, guys. Thomas, get him over. <laughs> go back, get him. Anyway, look, 4-3. The, the score line says something, but not necessarily how you feel about the game. Yeah, we were just standing there saying 4 3, I think, flatters Manchester United. And I think it's how you frame it in the change room. I think the manager's got to think about the next game and how he can position this, this result to bring some positivity out of it sometimes and somehow. But it feels like almost like it could have been five or six at any point. I thought that Bayern Munich could have gone through the gears and really blown Man United away in my eyes, but they didn't for whatever reason. And Man United, like, like the manager said, the frustration comes in where you, you, you're not having the ability to stay in games, you're not being hard to beat. All the things he said in that. We kind of were talking about ourselves, and I think he's bang on the money there, the manager. Yeah. Did it feel like it for you? Because it was that every time they did get back into the game, it was so quick that Bayern Munich just completely extinguished yeah. any hope. Yeah, it was almost as if they were waiting for United to score. I think, right, come on, here we go, we'll turn it on again. Mm. Um, United were... They've had spells in every game they've lost this season where they've done OK, mm. but it's not enough. There's a softness there, there's a weakness there. But once you concede one, there's, uh, as I said before, there's nobody say, right, come on, five mm. minutes, we stay here, we stay in this game. Mm. But, you know, it's two goals and, and, and they're too far behind. Mm. Too many, as the manager said, there's too many players making individual mistakes. Mm. The goalkeeper, unfortunately, gets highlighted because of the, it, the position he's in. But as I said before as well, I think this is going to be almost an identical season to last year. Mm. I think they're a cup team. 
They can possibly win the FA Cup. They can possibly win the League Cup. They're just not at this level, I don't think, yet. I don't. I thought the manager came in last year and really consolidated, did really well, brought them back to somewhere where they should be. But I think the summer has hindered them of getting to where that next level is. And we saw tonight that yeah. they're, they're low of this level. The weather, absolutely perfect playing conditions. My name is Derek Ray. With me in the commentary position is the Arsenal legend Lee Dixon. And every reason to believe we're in for an entertaining match here. It is Bayern Munich versus Manchester United. Yeah, really looking forward to this one, Derek. Excite me. Come on, let's see some entertainment. Fred. And so they start at 11 for Bayern. Manuel Neuer stands between the posts. David Alaba plays alongside Niklas Zule at the back. And the starting role and attack today is handed to Robert Lewandowski. Coman. Well, you know, I don't think the goalkeeper will be the slightest bit bothered by that effort. Well, he won't want to watch that on the replay, I tell you. He was way, way wide there. And here's the lineup for Manchester United. Harry Maguire plays alongside Victor Lindelof in central defence. And potentially a real handful in attack today, Edinson Cavani. Scott McTominay. Cavani. Chances on. Can they put it away? Well, able to survive that attacking push. Not much time to make up his mind. Manchester United throw in here. Now, can they create something? Well, a badly timed run, just a fraction offside. Zule. Now with Kimmich. Sané. Well, he was a Champions League runner-up in his Borussia Dortmund days, Robert Lewandowski, and still one of the best in the business when it comes to plundering. Well, centre-forward play doesn't come much better than this guy. He's a dying breed, there's not many of his type around. Scores with both feet, heads goals, tap-ins, shots from outside the box. A real good all-rounder. Real danger. This is Coma. Well, disappointing end to the move. 